Hi everybody. It's me and Scully. And we are at the Bradford Museum. No, not Bradford. Okay, Penn Brad Oil Museum. I believe it's in Bradford, isn't it? No. This I is saw actually, signs for it. Yeah. We went to a town called. <laughs> I saw that. Penn Brad Oil Museum. We're going to check this place out today. We just took the mistress in the specialized parking from home. About a two hour ride through uh, most of the Allegheny Forest. And this is an oil museum for what Pennsylvania is secondary known for. The oil, the coal, all that kind of stuff. So, yep, we're here. I'm going to go and check out some stuff. And if I see anything or something looks really good, I'll show it to you. They're open and we're going to go pay our little fee and see what the museum holds. Days about 1895, and the first one is these were actually powered by steam. Mm -hmm. um, and they ran up into the 1980s for the most part. Uh, I remember this stream. Yeah, most of these, there's still a couple that run if you know where to look, but most of them are gone. It's just an electric jack like this on a timer instead of this where they mechanically hooked them on and off as they needed to pump them. But. So that was the original zip line. I guess in a way. <laughs> As a yeah. kid, yeah. yeah. I would use it like one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, most of them are gone. The scrap thieves go out and get the, the big stuff when scrap values go up and the collectors get it too, which nobody minds too much. But uh, at least they're being saved if the collectors yeah. get them. Yeah. 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 For the drilling. And then it has to come out. That's mm. called pulling a well. The paraffin in the oil is, is nicknamed BS in the oil business because you can guess what that stands for. Mm -hmm. uh, to pull all these rods out and unscrew them with all the pipe, 20 foot section of pipe, 25 foot rod. 2,000 foot well, they have 80 of these rods, 100 sections of 20. 1934 oil, sand, mm -hmm. core, mm -hmm. analyze. Lab um, equipment all together in this field of acquired by John uh, de Petor from Lean oh, Petroleum, yeah. formerly owned by Wilson's Page and the uh, Petroleum Reclam Reclamation Company to determine property. Permittable and oil and water situations of the sand saturation of the sand core.
just some of the equipment used and things that were done with and companies that supplied mm -hmm. the oil industry. We have a lunch pails. I like that lunch pail. You yeah, slide it out. Stuff. Yeah, but that was what was here back then. Mm. Huh. I remember the early travel mugs. Molded plastic. I remember trying to get those things clean. Yeah, I never did come clean that. Nope. Belt buckle. Mm. They had everything. <coughs> now that's a calculator. <laughs> Okay, I don't think I was alive when Kendall Oil was a big deal. Okay, I gotta get by here for a minute. Mm -hmm. But I do remember Penn's Oil. You okay? Too tight in there? Yeah. That is a picture of a man pouring 10 gallons. Is it gallons or quarts? Did they say? <coughs> of nitroglycerin into a holder where they would put like three or four of them down in the hole to blow it open and get the oil out. He just poured nitroglycerin into a container where one drop could kill you with no problems. This is all so cool. That is a quilt made from pictures of an oil drill rig going off. And that is the hemp rope that was used to put down that Bit that would drill the hole into the ground. And this is another one of those fire trucks. Another picture of it. Wow. This is all 
Pennzoil and Fishing sockets. I like doing this kind of stuff. And if you like doing it, <clears throat> it looks like a really good place. They have a beautiful movie that I sat and watched, took about five minutes maybe, and it told all about all this stuff. I am just giving you a quick overview of what I'm seeing here. I did not get all of the information because it went by quickly, but oh, there's a rattlesnake skin. Saws, drills, that's how they used to carry the nitroglycerin around, close the lid, and then they opened it up when they got where they were going. Two horses, one maybe two men, and they got it where they needed to go. And these are the containers that the stuff was put into. The glycerin. That's what they look like. And then they would put the drilling rigs in after it was all built. There's a large full-size one right outside. We're going to go look at that next. It might be. Those are the drilling rods. So, Scully, what do you think? Brilliant. I'm glad I stopped. Never thought the oil. That video told me that Pennsylvania's oil was used as a lubricant oil. Not so much of it was gasoline, but for your motors and all of your equipment that needed oil to move, go up and down, that's what Pennsylvania is known for. I, however, did not know that. I thought Pennsylvania's oil was the same as everybody else's oil. After they did all of the drilling, 
they would put a pump over it like that. And this is a little bit more modern. That was the old type. And this is the new type. And you see a lot of these all over Pennsylvania. Most of them aren't moving anymore or doing anything of any sort. And usually probably about not too far away, but not right on top of, they will have one of these tanks, like the little yellow one over there. And somebody will come around and take up the oil. <coughs> After it's pumped a couple of days. Yeah. So this would pump. And this one would fill up. Once it got full enough, someone would come around and empty it out. 